Elden Ring, releasing on the 25th of February 2022, is the first of many big games that we're looking to cover next year. I personally am really excited for this one. I've been a fan of From Software's games for many years now. So for me personally, this is a big release that I'm really excited about. And I've also really enjoyed breaking out of bounds, doing glitch exploration, trying to get into DLC before it was released, all of that kind of stuff in previous From Software games. So this is something that's kind of right up my alley. Now, we finally got access to the network test thanks to my jailbroken PS4. But before people get ready to write an angry comment about spoilers, I just want to explain what the spoilers will involve and how we go about this on this channel. So we don't do data mining here, and that's not just specific to this game and not wanting to spoil it because the fans are very specifically up in arms about spoilers for these games. But it's just a general thing on deconstructing the game. Mike and I like to work on the car while it's running, we like to play it while breaking it. So what we're into is doing out of bounds exploration, glitch exploitation, things like that where we're playing the game with nothing but us, the controller, and the same game version available to everyone else. So that's what you'll be seeing here. It also should be noted that Elden Ring is an open world game, and most of the areas that we access out of bounds in the network test will be inbounds in the final game. So it does mean that there could be a lot of spoilers in things we spot, but since the data is not there in the download, higher detail assets, enemies, all kinds of stuff doesn't populate out of bounds. What we're mainly going to be doing here is looking at low detail assets, stuff that isn't fully spawned in, and then speculating about it. And if that is too spoilery for you and not something you're into, hey, that's why I'm warning you right here at the beginning. But it's just something that we're into doing and it's, it's fun to look at it that way and then see how correct our speculation was when the game finally comes out. Uh, we're also not looking at anything from data mining or leaks or anything like that. So everything that you're going to see in these videos before the release of the game is just based on the same network test that was available to everyone who was supposed to be included in it. And we're breaking out of bounds just, you know, with the controller, not using any special hacks or cheats, doing it the same way as other videos you've seen in the past. This is just our take, our speculations on it. Hopefully Mike is going to be getting set up with uh, his own PS4 here in the next few days so we can both get on this early. We will both most likely be buying it on PC when the game finally releases. So for this first video, I'm just going to be doing sort of a primer on methodology where I'm going to show how to break out of bounds. I'm going to talk about, you know, what you need to do to get set up and kind of explain the methodology of how I'm doing this stuff. Mainly so it makes sense when you're watching these videos in the future, why I have to walk a certain path, spawn in a certain location, do the weird things, just the same as we do with any of these games we've covered in the past, where there's a certain methodology to exploiting the game or finding ways to break out of bounds. And then beyond that, I just wanted to show a few discoveries I thought were interesting and worth speculating on. Again, just based on my experiences of playing, not based on anything from any data mining or anything like that. Without further ado, I'm Ryan. Welcome to Deconstructing the Game. Let's get to it. Let's start with step one, how to get out of bounds. Now this is not actually how I initially did it. This whole southeast corner of the map has a number of places where you can do this, but the way I did it initially was much, much harder. And fortunately a friend of mine watching me play on Discord took pity on me and told me a much easier method that they'd seen from someone else's video where there's another spot where it is much, much easier to do. So let me just show you the easy one and not waste any of your time. If you look at this spot that I've showed on the map, you'll find a place where the barrier wall does a perfect little 90 degree angle out from these rocks, which will shove you through if you get stuck in it. Now it's not always quite as easy as I just demonstrated, that took a little bit of practice, but sometimes you'll have to wiggle around a little bit. If you get stuck in a falling animation, you will eventually die after about 10 seconds. Just try to remain calm. Do it again eventually i guarantee you you will get it down enough that you can do it in less than a second like i just demonstrated but fortunately you only have to do this once assuming you can do this next part right our first order of business after breaking out of bounds is to get a fast travel point out of bounds so that we can freely just teleport in and out of bounds whenever we want to go back and forth between normal gameplay and out of bounds exploration now, unfortunately, you can't just climb right back up the hillside that you came down a moment ago to break out of bounds. 
you have to go all the way south around this peninsula. Stick close to the cliffside so that you don't fall through the terrain and die, and you will eventually make it around to just a little bit west of where you broke out of bounds in the first place, and you'll see a little grove of trees. Now this is the only side of Lost Grace that you can activate out of bounds that will actually show up on your map. There are actually a number of others to be found out of bounds in the network test, but unlike this one, they will not populate on your map after you activate them. So unfortunately, this means they are not available for fast travel. You'll still reappear here after you die, but once you leave, you can't go back to them through the game's map. This location down here though, which is called South Lake Agil, will give us a point that we can fast travel to out of bounds, making it easier to just go around and explore whenever you want, while still being able to go back to normal gameplay at will. Now that we've got that established, and you can quickly go out of bounds and explore whenever you want, the next thing to talk about is procedures of how to explore out of bounds in this network test. The largest area available for us to explore out of bounds is this eastern region over here, so the first thing I need to show you is how to safely get down off this plateau we start on so that you can explore it. What you want to do here is go back to near where you broke out of bounds in the first place and skirt along the outside of the eastern edge of the barrier wall until you get to a point where you can see one of the geysers that your horse can jump on off the edge of the cliff. I'd like to just briefly interrupt this video here to say how exploitable I think this mechanic is going to be in the final game, depending on how careful From Software is. Now I've prepared this lovely Microsoft Paint diagram to explain. The short version is that these geysers that blast your horse up in the air negate fall damage around them so that you won't kill yourself if you miss your jump the first time and fall back down. Now the thing about this is, if speedrunning has taught us anything, it is that if a game has a physics engine, players will find a way to break it. And I don't expect it'll be all that long before players find ways to launch or drop themselves at weird angles, falling with style if you will so that they can bypass entire areas of the game, land on these geysers and survive. And although this will be a useful trick to speedrunners, the thing about it speedrunning is, is if a game is too exploitable and it's too easy to just bypass huge chunks of it, people will get really fast times, it won't be considered that competitive, and the appeal of it will wear off quickly. Also, it kind of takes challenge out of the game if you can do this, so for the hope of all of us playing, and for the challenge of speedrunners to give them a little bit of something to sink their teeth into, hopefully From Software does a pretty good job to stop us from doing this. Although, you gotta admit, it is kind of funny. I guess I pretty much spoiled what you need to do next, but it's pretty simple. Jump off the cliff near the geyser, and as long as you land pretty close to it, you won't take any fall damage and you're good to go. There are actually a few of these out of bounds, and you can use them to get up and down from different areas pretty easily. There's another one up to the north that makes it easy to get up and down off this same plateau. Now, once you're in the eastern and southern regions here out of bounds, you're going to notice very quickly that detail starts to drop and things stop spawning in as soon as you get a little ways away from the area intended to be in the network test. Now, if you look off to my right here as I'm riding along, the spot where the ground becomes lower in detail and there's no grass has no collision, so if you step on those spots, you will immediately fall through. The way to avoid this if you want to explore more than a stone's throw out of bounds is to stay on the rocks. The rock models always seem to have collision no matter how far out of bounds you go. I used this method to get pretty far out of bounds. I got so far that there was just not even low detail assets spawning and the map just completely stopped. So this is pretty effective to get really far out of bounds, and that about wraps it up for our basic methods of out of bounds exploration in this network test. There are a few other tricks I'm sure I'll be discovering or sharing as we go along and do videos, but those are the basics to get you started. With that out of the way, let's get into just the first of the interesting discoveries I've made checking out the network test of Elden Ring. A neat element that I discovered all around the map were these abandoned shacks that all follow a similar design most of them have a fast travel point, but they usually have something else, like a corpse with some items, possibly an NPC, or in the case of this one, actually a little puzzle. Now this was pretty cool. How it works is you activate the painting, then you go to the location depicted and you're rewarded with an item. So yeah, it's just like treasure map quests in other games, but with a cool From Software twist. Now I'm really sorry, I somehow lost the clip of when I first did this, and there was a ghostly figure of the painter sitting there in a chair and then in front of him was a small rune item. So not a huge reward, but I would imagine you would do this a bunch of times. 
And to speculate on this a little further, if this follows on from the style of the previous games, I would not be surprised if after you complete all of these little paintings, if you go through a large painting where you meet the painter. If you only see these leftover specters of the painter, it would make sense that the painter has transitioned into their own painting world, which is something that's appeared in past From Software games. So that's just my speculation based on nothing but doing this one and the fact that there was the ghostly apparition of the painter, but it would be really cool to go into the painting at the end and meet the painter in the painter's world. This one's just a little tidbit, but I discovered that this guy, Calais, who yes, he looks like Santa Claus, is probably the merchant that's sort of the friendly merchant that follows you throughout the game like there's been in several previous From Software games because I found him again out of bounds and he had no inventory, presumably meaning his inventory is updated and he's not just a copy of his previous incarnation. So yeah, it's just a tiny little thing, but it was the same guy again. So if you see him twice, that probably means he's going to follow you as you travel along through regions in the game, which, you know, considering he looks like Santa, that's going to bring me Christmas joy all year round. Oh boy, had to include that one. Another really little one, but I found what looked like a partially spawned guard tower in the next region to the south, which just made me wonder if maybe there would be guards with bows in neighboring zones that could actually shoot you, which would be new to the series and brutal but honestly fair, just one of those new things to watch out for. Probably the most unusual thing I found while exploring Out of Bounds was this. Now, I wasn't able to stand directly on top of it because there's no collision underneath it, but I was able to wander around it and look at it pretty close with my telescope from different angles. And, you know, it, it has me puzzled, I'll admit, but just a guess throwing out there looking at it, it is, you know, it appears to be a door. And I think these white glowing objects actually are items inside chests or uh, possibly bodies inside graves and that you open this up and by you know collecting keys, killing gold, what's it creatures, who knows what, you open up these chests as you meet certain conditions. So that's just a wild ballpark assumption, but it's a weird thing to be loaded in at all. And just to think of what could those all be in a row there where there would be this placeholder of them, I was like, oh, you know, I wonder if they're tombs and you open it up and there's an item inside glowing on the corpse and these are placeholders for that. But that was the best I could come up with. I just, you know, I wanted to show this because it was probably the weirdest looking thing I saw. I saved the most interesting thing and the most spoilerific also, by the way, for the end. And this is something that I think is going to concern both the plot and the gameplay design in a fairly major way. Now, I have a strong feeling this is going to be correct, and you may already know if you've seen leaks about this game, but this is not actually based on anything I've seen on the game. This is surely based on that this was written by George R. R. Martin, and he comes from a generation of writers strongly influenced by Joseph Campbell. And I just have a strong feeling that the way that the air trees are going to work in this game is going to be very similar to how the Dark Tower works in Stephen King's Dark Tower series, or the many other fantasy writers who have used a concept based on the Yggdrasil from Norse mythology. Let me just quickly translate that from mythology nerd. What I mean is that it seems likely that the Big Erd Tree was kind of like a hub for the entire world, and the ones in each region were connected it, creating magical stability or who knows what. But in gameplay, I imagine that this means each time you go into a region, similar to opening up Sheikah Towers in Breath of the Wild, you would go to these smaller but still gigantic earth trees and do something to them, possibly opening up fast travel in the region. I can't be exactly sure what it would be. Unfortunately, when I got to these, and there were two that I could get close to, they had no assets near them, so it was really hard to tell anything by looking at them up close. There was just the huge tree sticking out of the ground. But there does seem to be one in each region, and just from what I could see from the one region I have access to, I would imagine they're all in a big circle around the large tree, and that somehow connecting them all, again, similar to other fiction that I've read before, other movies, it's it's not a novel idea, sorry Jar Jar R. R. Martin, but um, that you have to reconnect these sort of hubs back to the central spoke to put order back in the world. It was also a pain to get out here, by the way. 
Now, I do have a little bit of evidence for this within the game, and that is that this one site of Lost Grace that you're able to unlock outside of the area you're supposed to be in, instead of the lines of grace pointing you forward towards the castle like all the ones within the network test area do, it instead points down south in the direction of the Erd Tree for the region. So I know that's not a lot to go on, but just based on the mythological and past fiction connections and that evidence alone, I'm just kind of speculating that you have to do something with the trees in each region. That is going to be all I can squeeze into part one, but I hope that was enough to whet your appetite for a little bit of Elden Ring. We're going to be covering it a fair amount in the next year, and I'm just trying to get a little early head start. Hopefully I don't get myself in trouble uh, accessing this network test, but you know, this is what we do here. If they send it out into the wild, it was only a matter of time before the 9.0 firmware got jailbroken and people were able to play the network test offline. So I, uh, I wanted to be one of the first people doing it and within reason, without spoiling too much, I wanted to share it with all of you and show you our early speculation and theorizing about the game. Hope you had fun. Thanks for watching. I'm Ryan. This is Deconstructing the Game.